Hello guys, my name is Remik, and in today's video we'll talk about very frequently encountered scenario by .NET developers, so how to integrate your .NET Web API with an existing database with the usage of NT Framework Core database first approach. We'll use the one command to scaffold the DB context and also generate all associated with that database models with the proper relationships and all the configuration. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then please hit the subscribe button down below, write the comment, give me a like, and as always, now we're going straight into the code. All right, guys, as you see on the screen, we have brandly new created .NET 8 web API with two additional files. The first one is called create database.sql and it will create for us the new e-commerce db in the microsoft sql server with a lot of tables with different types of the relationships and the configurations and we'll be integrating with this database in our dotnet 8 web api also we have a second file that is called seed database.sql and it will insert a lot of data into those tables so now we can go into the SSMS and we can generate this database and then seed the data into this e-commerce DB. And now after creating the new query and then pasting the content of the create database.sql file and we'll click on the execute, it will generate for us the database. So when I will now refresh the databases site, we'll have the e-commerce database with all of those tables with the proper foreign keys between all of those with the proper relationships and the configuration here. Now, when I will remove the content of that and when I will copy the content of the seed database.sql, we'll insert the data into those tables. When we'll copy this content and go back into the SSMS, we'll see that when we'll execute whole content we see that we have a lot of messages that the 10 rows were affected so it means that when we we'll go and check for instance the categories we we'll see that we have 10 of the categories and also the other tables have also the data. So now we have to integrate with this database in order to create the DB context and also all of those models with the proper relationships and the configuration. Now we have to add three Nugget packages related with NDD Framework Core. The first one will be called NDD Framework Core dot tools, another one design and also the last one, the SQL Server specific Nugget package. So we'll start with this tools from a different core. So when I will click and execute this command, I will add this Nugget to my API project. Another one will be called design. Design, also I will add this package to my API. And the last one will be called SQL Server. So .NET add package Microsoft and Framework Core dot SQL Server. Now, once we have all the Nugget packages, we are ready to execute this final command to generate for us the DB context as well as the all the entities from an existing database. So in the command line, you have to type .NET EF DB context scaffold and now the DB connection string. So the connection string to your database, in my case, it will be hosted in the local host. So we have to type server equal to the local host with the port 1433 database will be called e-commerce db so the name of your database user id will be equal to the sa password will be equal to the wrong sql server password one exclamation mark and at the end, we have to trust the server certificate. So trust 
server certificate equal to the true and now we have to define the provider so we are using the sql server so it will be the microsoft dot entity framework for dot sql server and at the end we have to define also the output directory and we we'll have it called as the entities now when we execute this command it will generate for us the db context and also all the entities and now as you see we have all the entities that were automatically created for us and also the e-commerce context we see also that in the on configuring method we see the warning that we have to protect this connection string and for sure we will move this connection string into our app settings json file but besides that we have all the configuration in the fluent api for all the models with the relationships as well so as you see all the models are in here i will just extract this db context to be not in this level as the entities but one level above so it will have the different namespace of course and we have to define also this namespace for all the entities now we have to get rid of this db connection string in our on configuring method so i'll just copy this whole content and i will remove this method completely from there and in the app settings json file we'll create a section called connection strings and in here we'll have db connection string not hard coded and now the last thing to do in the program cs we have to register our db context so we have to type builder.services.add db context with the specific type and it will be e-commerce db context and inside of it we'll have the options and in those options we have to define the connection string so we have to use the sql server and get the connection string from the app settings json file so builder.configuration.get connection string and it will be called db connection string now i'll create one endpoint that will return for us most of the data based on those entities and their relationships so i will just create app map get and it will be called api demo let's say i'll use the async keyword to use the async methods on the db context because i have to inject e-commerce db context to retrieve the, the data from the database db con context and inside of it, I will type results is equal to await db context dot orders, and then we'll start with including so joining tables. So inside of it, I will join the the customer table, and also I will include the order details. After order details, what I remember inside of it, we have also the product, and in the product, we have also the category. So we can start with including also this one. So in the order details, we we'll include the product, and in the product, the product will include also the, the categories 
and at the end I will just finish at this point and I will include the shippings that are associated with the order itself. So as you see we have the I collection of shippings in here. So I will just include as well this with the orders table so it will be shippings. After that I would like to return the specific structure, not the whole content that will return from our database. So I'll use the select and based on that I will use the new keyword and after that I will just type. So the customer name will be equal to the order order customer and then first name and from the order customer last name. I would like to get also the order date total amount and also the status at the end and to connect to the specific structure I would like to have also the products and only the specific info from those products so order details are connected with the product so we have to select from this one and then order details will be the new and what side of it it will be the order details dot product the product name also the quantity also the unit price and the list of the categories as the string list so it will be the categories equal to the order details then the product then the category so as you see we have this whole relationship chain after that we'll select the category name and to we'll create the list of those category names after that we will have the list of the products so to list as well i will use in here and at the end of this whole statement i would like to use to list async and now i'll just return results dot okay and this results that we have just created now we can finally check if our solution works fine based on scaffolding then existing database generating db context and also all associated entities in the get endpoint i can click on the execute and we see that we have 200 ok response and the response body is the same as we have defined in our get endpoint so the whole data were properly joined together based on the relationships that we have in our database.